Here's where we started our week, and as this footage progresses, you'll see where we wound up as our team experimented on this build. I want to thank Shadow, basically we co-opted this because we were building and tossing ideas off one another. I want to thank Wilso for his constant trolling, retorts, and slave labor via gathering mats. Joe the Reaper for helping us grind some higher level areas to test this build and putting his own creativity in the mix. He is also a streamer at twitch.tv forward slash show the reaper at power level 70. Also, I'll be linking uh, A1 get this money because he was leading the way in some creative trap building and paved the way with his launcher ideas. How to gang it? Suck on Pandora here with the Fort Meta, aka the Lethal Chamber. I wanted to get this build out for any of the other builds captured on this week, 124, 121, because it's effective. It's not a gimmick. We use it, and it's basically AF payable. This fort is primarily an Atlas defense, but could be used on Retrieve the Data if you're a quick builder and can do one by one. Okay, let's give a rundown on how this thing is built. The meta fort. You're gonna lay down four floor pieces. You're gonna lay another one outside of those. Parallel to the base floor. You got your initial floor spots going north, south, east, and west. Straight across, not on the angles. You'll find you'll, you won't need the angles. The angled roof seems to confuse the husks plenty. Big back wall, full wall, low tiles. Low tiles for the dynamos. Dynamos can fit on those. I like to use a stun. We experimented with a lot of different traps on the back wall, and I came to like the stun the most because the wall launchers, in my case, didn't have that quick of a reload. So that that stun gives my wall launchers some time to reset themselves so the husk can be hit again here. So we have angled roofs facing away from the husk, and we put in uh, half walls, I suppose you'd call them. Half walls. In the triangle piece, you just take out the uh, bottom three or top three pieces in order to create those. And those are steel. Now you'll find the husk will almost always hit the angled roof. They do not like angled roof pieces and the same thing is gonna happen with the smashers. Now that would show the reaper's idea. Put a wall darts on the outside there. The only thing that happened wrong with the wall darts here is that the husk kind of fell into them and would bang away at them, but we tried it in some other missions where the layout was quite a bit better and they weren't affected at all, so it was really effective. So if you need a little extra DPS, say you're running a higher level area, I would definitely suggest using Sho's idea there and throwing, throwing the wall darts up two tiles away, in this case, well, one tile away. They're not primarily connected to the forest, so the husks usually just leave them alone. Then we're gonna lay down floor launchers floor launchers all along the bottom there. That's what's going to fling your husk. In this case, I've got a level 25 legendary floor launcher with 15% bonus impact, but you really don't need that great of a launcher. Any launcher is going to do you on this build, hence why this one's the meta. Well, we did some more experiments, and I got footage of that at the end of this video, but any floor launcher can do this, hence why this is the, the one we chose for the guide, because this is doable across the board. It's really not that expensive to do, and as you can see, it's super simple. There, we got our base down, we got our triangle walls, I've got the triangle walls there on the back as well, so I can walk up and down the fort easily, you can see the results there. Boxes are trapped out, retractable floor spikes for pure DPS, wall dynamos on the side for more DPS, the stun lights to stun them so my floor launcher's got time to reload. They come in, they attack the angled roof piece, they get launched by the floor launcher, they're thrown via the ramp into the lethal chamber, and that is where they meet their timely death in large numbers. little banner to help the fort recharge. There you see some more devastation. We ran this on uh, 70 zones and we were in the 40s. So this, this thing is viable across the board. The only struggle that you're gonna run into with this build is that it does cost a lot of planks and a lot of ore to trap it out at the level that uh, we've been trapping it out at. You don't gotta trap it out near as bad. And there you can see a smasher actually got a pretty good piece of it. So that's another weakness is sometimes the smashers, because there's, this is so stripped down and so simple, you got to remember your atlas is pretty exposed. If the fort does fail, well, 
It sort of leads to a cascading result of, uh-oh, we're in trouble. So focus your smashers if they don't get hit by the wall launchers. You, you want to mark them. That's right thumbstick on Xbox, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what it is on the other systems. And as a team, go focus it. Teamwork is just so key to the end game on Fortnite or getting deeper into Fortnite on a consistent basis. See, there's the smasher. They like walls. They don't like angled walls or angled roofs. I mean, but they, they like walls. They just smash. They're like, wreck it, Ralph. I'm gonna wreck it! But in that case, he got caught in the lethal chamber and he's sort of he's super confused by the angled roofs and doesn't know what he wants to do next. And smasher, no smash. There, the team focuses him. No problem. Might as always avoid Santas. The way you don't set off Santas is you stay back. Stay back from the Santas. In that case, the that's an example of the wall darts. Trying to charge that wall, I saw it as a defense, but that rarely happens. So the wall dart idea really does work. In this case, the smasher couldn't uh, was too tall and couldn't get under the angled roof piece, and that seems to be the only time they actually attacked the triangle walls. When he has the ability to go for the angled roof, that's what he's going to prefer. We got a pretty high-level floor launcher there doing the work for us. Tier 3 metal, so the Smasher's having a tough time, and for whatever reason, he's just punching the floor. He's just punching the floor. This goes into the latter part of the video where, really, we're just talking about weaknesses. Because there is weaknesses to this meta build. One, it, it's a little pricey if you trap it out as much as I have. As much as the whole team did. I have an Outlander in Wilsa who's constantly running and doing things. Giving me ore, giving me planks, giving me nuts and bolts. A lot of people aren't going to have that benefit, so you want to minimalize it. You see there's so many options here. In this case, what uh, Corrupt Shadow did is that he built it too high. And what he did is he sort of made his own little variation of an infinite loop here combined with the lethal chamber. And then it's going, they're going up one space and one, one tile high, one tile long. They're going into uh, an initial box, which launches them again one tile high, one tile long. And then they go into a lethal chamber. And they get caught in there, they get nailed, probably die, but Huskies might live and then fall back down only to get knocked up once more because just in the time that it takes them to get up, get back on their feet and start moving again, your floor launcher is probably reloaded. There you go, you can see it working really well right there. Another thing to look out for is you gotta get your angles right. So here, Shadow and I are experimenting. And granted, we had little low half walls that are probably helping block him. But there is an impact check. Frozen Squall, he's been hanging out in the chat. He's apparently entwined. He's been telling us that there's some sort of energy system in the background. I'm not completely knowledgeable about it, so I'm not gonna, like, give you misinformation here. But you need to level your floor launchers apparently higher and higher as you go up, or you're not gonna have the oomph to launch them like you need to to get them into these boxes. But what's great about these boxes is that they're away from the fort at this point. A lot of builds want the husks to come in and you sort of guide them towards the objective. And those are perfectly fine, but what's good about this is that you're doing a lot of your killing away from the objective. You're forcing the husks further and further back, which gives you a lot more elbow room to work. And, and also, if things get foobar and the crap hits the fan, you've got some wiggle room to quickly be flexible and, and adjust and, and crap's gonna hit the fan in Fortnite especially as you move up in levels we just did canny ssd7 with a guy named phantom and boy it was chaos hey thanks for watching guys we'll see you at twitch.tv forward slash stuck on pandora we're gonna be doing one of these a week that's the goal because i'm mostly focused on the, the streaming side of things so i hope i'll see you guys there thanks for watching peace